Hi, today we're at car park number two, Kingfisher Shopping Centre, Redditch, Worcestershire. A well-known spot for wildlife photography. At least it is if you're interested in starling murmurations or starling roosts. I've been to several over the years, but this one's a bit different. I'm on the top of this multi-storey car park. We're quite high up, so it's going to be unusual in that I'm shooting from an elevation. I've been to some of these starling murmurations where they're on piers going out into the sea, such as at Brighton, Eastbourne or Aberystwyth, and photographically they can be very good. But this will be different, I say, because I'm going to be looking down at the birds at times, I would think. And as I got here, I looked over the side wall here. There's a lot of fir trees. And my guess is that's where the starlings are going to drop into. Now, unusually, I decided not to burden myself with a tripod. I'm just going to handhold, even doing the video. And that's really because I'm only going to be using wide angled lenses. These birds are going to be very, very close to me. So this is a 12 to 40 mil. And I've also got the 7 to 14 mil as well, which I'm expecting to have to put on later when the flock gets bigger. Starling murmurations do attract the crowds. Some of the well-known ones get hundreds of people turn up for them. Half an hour before sunset, the starlings start to arrive coming in in small groups, sometimes just two or three birds, but slowly merging and larger and larger flocks appearing. Because the sky was mostly grey, I was underexposing by one third or two thirds of a stop, trying to put some darkness into the birds. All of the footage is taken with the Lumix G9 Mark II and I didn't take any stills photographs. The sky wasn't really colourful enough. I don't think I'm going to do any slow motion footage at all. In fact, you might want to go the opposite way and start doing fast motion or time lapse. Those big swirling flocks are all about the movement, so if you slow it down, you lose that effect. So this is slow motion, it doesn't work. When I zoomed in tighter on the birds, this was okay. I like this, five times slow. That has a nice effect to it. But for these moving groups, you really want that speed. So most of the footage is at normal speed. Why do starlings form these large murmurations? Well, the main theory is it helps them to avoid predators in that it confuses the predators. Sparrowhawks and peregrines will often be in attendance and it's very difficult for them to single out an individual bird. I have to say, if it was me, if I was a starling, I would just go elsewhere where the peregrines and starlings aren't. Also, they're gonna keep warm to a degree by sharing the same tight knit group and there's perhaps some degree of communication on where the best feeding grounds are but nobody really knows that as i'm watching it i can't help feeling it's a bit like a firework display absolutely spectacular the other effect it had on me is i started swaying because I'm following these birds around with the camera and I'm turning around in circles, my legs started to go a bit wobbly and I'm swaying from side to side as if I was on a boat. I suspect the best tight-knit groups are actually formed when there's a predator close by. Watch this red area to the right. There's something comes out of the crowd there. There it goes. 
There were two peregrines in attendance, I saw them, and sparrowhawks will also be about, and you can also see that slightly larger bird there in the background. The whole event doesn't last very long, 30 minutes if you're lucky, but the exciting part where they really form these tight swirling masses, that's probably all over in 5 minutes. Now it would be better if there was a nice orange glow in the sky, but I didn't get that at all. But nevertheless it's still an absolutely wonderful sight to see. As the light starts to drop, the birds are now diving down out of the sky, going down towards those fir trees. And it's really interesting to see that they're landing on top of the fir trees, but then they go down inside it. And the other thing to note here is it's almost dark, yet when you're shooting video you can still film perfectly well. In really dark conditions video still works, unlike stills photography. These birds were suddenly disturbed by a loud hooting car horn. I would like to think it wasn't done deliberately. I'll finish off by showing another roost at nearby Brandon Marsh. I went here a couple of evenings but it never really worked, they didn't form nice shapes but look at the difference it makes when you've got a sunset. I wish I'd have had that at the Redditch side. Thanks for watching.